In today's review of the i5-13600K, we are going to be comparing it versus the Ryzen 7 5800X3D in 1080p gaming and also 4K gaming benchmarks in a head-to-head -head battle. And we are also going to be throwing in the mix the more expensive options, the Ryzen 9, the 7950X, and also the i9-13900K, as well as the predecessor, the i5-12600K and i9-12900K. And if we look at that i9-12900K in particular and throw up some benchmarks, you'll see that it is completely getting dusted by the i5-13600K. This is the first time I have seen an i5 slam an i9 from the previous generation and do so with a comfortable lead where the first benchmark here is Cyberpunk 2077, 1080p lower settings. Now I did use on the DDR5 platforms, 6800 megahertz, CL34 memory from G-Skill. And for the Intel side, we used the Z790 motherboard from ASRock, the Steel Legend. Worked perfect out of the box, no problems whatsoever. And then on the AMD side, we had a B550 Asus Tough motherboard and also an X670E Taichi. So back to those Cyberpunk numbers at 1080p, here's where it's coming in second place, but the i9-13900K does come in with a higher score, but doing so at a much higher price point of $560 versus $330 on the i5-13600K. Though if we look at CSGO, here's where there's a victory to be had at 1080p over the 12900K, also the 7950X and the 5800X 3D. So if CS goes your jam, then the i5-13600K is going to deliver. Then we move over to F1 2022, and we also tested all these games with the RTX 4090, and at 1080p low settings, you're gonna be testing the maximum CPU performance here, and we do have some 4K numbers which we'll touch on a little bit later. But here we saw the Ryzen 9 7950X etching out the i5-13600K, though then the i9-13900K, again, if you're willing to pay that more money and you like gaming at over 400 FPS <laughs> on F1, then be my guest. Though if you got stupid amounts of money, the i9, as we saw in yesterday's review, which I'll put the link up to here, is chopping up the charts. The next title up here is Horizon Zero Dawn, and here is where the 5800X3D gave a bit of a smackdown to the i5-13600K, scoring at 278 average FPS versus 260. However, the 0.1% lows were very similar in this benchmark. And one thing about the 13600K, as we'll move on to the next benchmark here in Far Cry 6, is it did have sometimes the best 0.1% lows. That's the worst FPS. And if this is really bad in certain titles, then you can notice stuttering in your games. But here's where it beat out even the 13900K in Far Cry 6. However, it did fall behind an average FPS, but that still beat out the 5800X3D. The last title up here is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And here's where we saw an impressive performance by the 13600K, like F1 2022, just getting edged out by the 7950X, but then beating the 5800X3D. Then moving on to the 4K gaming numbers, and here's where we'll go through those same five titles that we tested at 1080p. And moving through these titles, we can see that 13600K is either coming up the top of the charts or it's coming close. And if it comes close, then it usually comes in with some of the best 0.1% lows, which is important to notice because this CPU is coming in at a cheaper price point than the 5800X 3D then the 7950X and also the 13900K. Of course, the previous generation 12900K. And if we look at it versus the 12600K, it is coming in now with four more E cores and it does have an all core clock speed of 5.1 gigahertz versus the all core clock out of the box on the 12600K of 4.5 gigahertz. And so this is why in a lot of titles, the 13600K is beating out the 12900K because that's clocked at 4.9 gigahertz, depending on the motherboard. It may go down to 4.8 gigahertz all core. It runs hotter, especially out of the box. 
versus the 13600K. And that's coming in with 5.1 gigahertz. Pretty much all cores across the board. When I tested out the single core benchmark, we we're coming in with a thread in hardware info that was reading out 5.1 gigahertz. When it was doing the all core, it was 5.1 gigahertz. When it was doing the gaming benchmarks, it was again 5.1 giga. So this is a CPU that's doing exactly what Intel said it would do on the box with up to 5.1 gigahertz, except it's doing it on all cores, which I found pretty impressive. Then before we move into the workstation numbers, there is the power consumption and temperatures that you guys may wish to know about. And here's where out of the box, it did get quite high in terms of those temperatures, going close to 90 degrees. And this was with an H170i Corsair water cooler, 420 mil, pretty much one of the best water cooling solutions out there. So if you are serious about getting high end performance from the 13600K, you may wish to get a good water cooler to match up with it. However, if you are into undervolting and you don't mind dropping the speeds down to say 4.9 gigahertz with a minus roughly 85 millivolt, you'll not only save over 40 watts, but when it comes to gaming, you'll also save quite a bit of power where then you can couple it with say a budget $20 cooler in gaming if you undervolt and get pretty good performance from this CPU. Also, when it comes to power consumption during gaming, I ran two different tests here. And just like the 13900K, the 13600K kind of has a brain of its own, where if the CPU is not getting loaded up a lot, like in Apex Legends at low settings, it won't use as much power as, say, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which does tend to max the CPU quite heavily, especially with an RTX 4090. And here's where we saw the power consumption numbers max out at 106 watts, and then going with the undervolt went down to 85 watts. So not anywhere near as big as a difference as the 7950X, for example, and even the 13900K, but it is a difference that will be realized if you are gaming for long hours. Then let's move through those productivity benchmarks where the 14 cores, 20 threads, very interesting number there, is doing quite well. It's coming in sometimes very close to the 12900K. For instance, we look at Geekbench 5, both on the single and multi-core coming very close and also beating out the 5950X in this particular benchmark. The move over to 7-zip decompression and compression, again, closing in on the 12900K and it pretty much scored identical in the compression and decompression. So it's balanced in that aspect and it does beat out the 12600K quite substantially. Though under everybody's favorite beverage, with a 1.3, version 1.3, this is where the 13600K came in with 62 seconds, so very close again to that 12900K, which was the previous generation i9 champion. So it is impressive to see these numbers coming out of the i5 variant, especially when it comes to workstation applications. And then moving over to Premiere Pro, here's where we saw a similar story yet again with the iGPU enabled, and it's coming close to that of the i9-12900K. The next up with V-Rate, we did come in the middle of the pack here with 15,832 V samples. And then lastly, onto Cinebench R23, came in at over 23,000 points. And also, if you decide to undervolt, you'll get an identical single core score, as well as slightly lower all core score, but also saving a substantial amount of power. So in my opinion, it's definitely worth it to undervolt the 13600K, even if you decide to use it as a workstation CPU, but especially say for instance, you wanna mount this thing in a mini ITX gaming PC. The one to the final benchmark, and this is the IPC, AKA the instructions per cycle, where I clock everything down to four gigahertz, and then I run the single core test. And here's where the Raptor Lake 13th gen CPUs come in with pretty much identical scores to the older Lake CPUs. So there's not really any improvement other than more cores and higher clock speeds, AKA better silicon, this time around with 13th gen. Then with all those numbers done, it is finally time to give you guys a recommendation that you can not only bank on, but you can make sure that you've made the right choice if you follow the tech yes advice. And here's where with the 13600K, the i5, I feel that this CPU at both 1080p and 4K gaming on the high end is a very good choice. Not only because you can couple it with the latest and greatest DDR5 memory, in this case it worked absolutely fine with 6800 megahertz CL34 out of the box, but also because you can use this CPU with a budget B660 motherboard 
undervolt it for example and then get some DDR4 memory and actually save quite a bit of money and get a very fast CPU that will do the job even with an RTX 4090 especially if you want a game at 4k so in ways with 13th gen I was hoping for an upgrade to the architecture itself bigger IPC boost but instead we got massive amount of efficiency gain in the terms of clock speeds going from 5.1 gigahertz on this i5 with four more e cores versus the 12600k at 4.5 gigahertz and so i feel like that is a very decent upgrade considering the 12600k came in at 300 dollars this is coming in at 330 dollars and if we look at inflation in the last year it's been absolutely massive it's a huge talking point now because it's basically becoming a reality if we look at even just pepsi for example they let the cat out of the bag or should i say let the soda out of the bottle and they said that prices have increased in the last year by 17 percent so i feel like this 10 percent price increase is very justified especially for what you're getting and what you can do with this cpu but also when it comes to the 12600k that can be had for 275 dollars at this point in time it will use less power with out of the box settings versus the 13600k but if you are into tuning and tinkering then the 13600k is definitely going to be the better piece of silicon and so in my opinion it makes it a much more desirable cpu because not only what it can do out of the box but because it is much better silicon to begin with also on that note with the memory speeds on the i5 12600k the most i could get them to was 6600 megahertz and so i had to downclock it because it was unstable at 6800 megahertz so for gaming in my opinion this cpu is an all-round good buy and also if you're into high-end gaming on the amd side i would go for the 5800 x3d over the 7950x for example and actually a lot of people already share this sentiment where we saw with the am5 release on its day one launch people went out and actually bought the 5800x3d and that went and got sold out so that's a good cpu and of course you can couple that with a cheaper option like a b550 and ddr4 memory and you'll get some excellent gaming results especially at 4k with a gpu like a 4090 even or even if you're going for the lower resolutions it'll do a great job with a 3080 or a 6800 xt where those gpus can be purchased on the used market for really good prices so before you get on out of here there is that final talking point the productivity and workstation benchmarks where i feel like this cpu would make a lot of sense for someone who wants to get a lot of work done but is still budget conscious where if we saw those benchmarks it's pretty much coming in with the same numbers as a 12900k in some benchmarks so look at the applications look at what you use and look at if the price is going to justify the upgrades from what you currently have but also keep in mind it's going to come in at a lot better of a price point than the 12900k and it's also going to do so whilst using less power so the augmented benefits are also going to be there but of course amd do have some good options there so when it comes to productivity if it hits the mark for you then it's definitely worth picking up anyhow guys i hope you enjoyed today's review of the 13600k which this one actually excites me much more than the i9 13900k because i feel it's going to be much more relevant for a lot more people and do let us know in the comment section below what you think of this new cpu the i5 and also the i9 love reading those thoughts and opinions as always just like this question of the day which comes from sanan and they ask why are the frame rates the same new drivers should have performed better don't they so they're referring to a really old video we did looking at driver sets comparing one to the other and we really found no difference and that was mainly to do with looking at drivers where people say the fps had actually downgraded and we didn't find any differences there however when it comes to benchmark and this actually ties in with today's video perfectly when i do my benchmarks i do them all in a closed sealed environment meaning with this video what you're seeing with the gaming benchmark numbers all the tests were done on the same nvidia driver and they're all done with the same windows patch at the same time and so that rules out any other variances that can come into play for instance say half a year later a game could get a game update and that makes the fps better so if you're comparing newer results to older results then you're starting to compare apples to oranges and you'll get different biases 
So in today's video, there are no biases. These are just the numbers. This is what you're getting. And I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did and you stayed this far and you want to see the tech content as soon as it drops around Tech Yes City, be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell, and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.